I just bought the book Bushcraft by Morris Kahansky, and I decided that instead of just putting it on the shelf, I would read it and try to practice the skills inside. In order to motivate myself to do so, I'm starting a little outdoors book club on my channel. The purpose of these videos is to share information, uh, practice. I'm hoping to learn a lot in the process and hopefully you will too. One other thing, I'm not an expert. If I was an expert, I wouldn't need to buy a book. You'll get to see what an average guy from Iowa does trying to practice these skills. You don't have to be a superman to go outside. Welcome to episode 6. We just had a little bit of a blizzard. It's still really blowing out here. And uh, I'm going to show you the next part of the Morris Kahansky book. And that's uh, a fire with feather sticks. And this is going to be a good old time. This is a pretty good spot. Nice and sheltered. Uh, real pretty. There's some deer around here. And I just decided to set up a little tarp. The prevailing winds are from that direction. How do I know? Well, I'm standing here. Another way you can tell is look at what side of the tree the blowing snow is sticking to. So I'm just going to kick all the snow that's on the ground kind of back just to give me a little bit more uh, space to work in and also uh, a little bit better wind block for me. Another reason besides shelter that I picked this spot is there's materials around here. I was specifically looking at this log. I'm going to see if there's some bark on here that I can strip off. Um, just makes it a little bit easier to keep the uh, fire from getting all wet. And there's some pieces there, it looks like. And here's some even better stuff. We're on the lee of the tree, and this is a standing dry, uh, dead probably cottonwood. I'm going to strip some of this stuff off and use it. Yeah, I think it's cottonwood. So there's some of that bark. Uh, this is where I'm going to put my fire in one pace from my shelter. And uh, if I wanted to, I could strip the rest of that bark and line the floor here, but I'm not going to. I'm going to put uh, down a little um, foam pad and then a wool blanket to work on. So like I was saying, we're going to talk about uh, feather sticks and I forgot my notes and I wanted to start this with a quote so I'm going to have to paraphrase and he says that when uh, natural dry kindling is scarce, it's useful to have an axe. <laughs> and uh, you know, today um, under these conditions, this is where an axe or some uh, really good ability with a knife um, will help you out. And he describes a method of uh, making feather sticks and then uh, building a fire off of it. And I'm going to try to do that today. Um, he says that the best wood for this is like a pine or an aspen. And you want uh, a standing dead uh, tree that's bigger than your uh, thumb and middle finger put together. So if you can wrap your thumbs and middle fingers around the tree, then it's probably not going to be uh, dry enough for you. Um, so you take and try to find a section of that that is more or less uh, uh, not free and cut that section out. Split it with your axe, and I did bring an axe along, so I'm going to I'm going to be able to do that. I won't be able to show all of this because it's cold. It's, I don't know, maybe five degrees out and my camera might have problems. So, but I will demonstrate the feather stick technique and then I'll finish doing the prep probably off camera. He says that the uh, ideal feather th stick is about thumb sized and is about from your uh, fingertips to your elbow in length. And so I'm going to try to find some of that kind of stuff and I'll be right back. I did manage to find and, and split up some suitable wood and I'm gonna make some shavings and some, some other kindling out of that. And I'm just gonna briefly show the technique and that he talks about in the book. Um, he does it differently than I have and when I've done this, I've usually never just even left them attached to the stick. I've Most of the time I've kind of just made shavings and gone to town. Well, what he says 
is when you want to leave them attached to the stick and get nice curly ones, you want to use this part, the, the curved part of the blade, um, in order to uh, get the best shavings. That's a little different technique than I've done. The other thing is, is he wants you to lock your arm for safety and then push with your whole body um, and get these suckers to go up. Now, um, I may or may not be able to do this perfectly today. That one's a little thick, but I'm going to do it kind of in slow motion. I'll do the rest of them as I out a little bit with your knife and basically what you want is this whole thing um, you see the other thing I'm doing there take my glasses off before they fall off is I'm kind of sawing I'm, I'm pushing with the tip of the knife but I'm also letting it slide a little bit and that's how it's cutting show a couple more here now see that one just that one aborted and uh, that'll happen. Don't throw those out. Use those to start your fire. They're, they're perfectly good. Now, start another one here. And what he wants is for these to really kind of curl up and look all sexy. Like that. And more than one curl is good. And what you want is the whole, you know, two-thirds to three-quarters of the length of the stick you want. Um, nice fine uh, things coming off. One thing that I've done in the past to make this easier is to just rotate the stick every time I make a cut so that I'm always cutting on an edge like that. And it's just a subtle rotation um, but but uh, that, that seems to make it easier for me than trying to cut on a flat surface. And then again at the end pop your knife out a little bit to flare those out so that they catch a little easier. Well, the cold does funny things to cameras. It popped my little on-off button out of there. Um, so I hesitate to show this part um, because maybe it's a little too rule-ridden. But I'm going to show it anyway because it's in the book. So he starts um, and shows what is good, and that's um, you want a feather stick that you know is like that with lots of curls and you know looks pretty good and is most of the length of the stick and that's a decent example this one's okay um, not not really using enough of the stick there this one's alright it's acceptable there's one curl this one there's multiple curls so he'd probably like that one better this one is unacceptable um, because the the shavings are too thick and it's not curling now this one has great curls but it's not acceptable because they're not all in one plane. Not 100% sure I understand that one. Um, then this one's a bad one because it's too thick. Uh, again, bad, too thick, too closely spaced together, and horrible. Too thick and in multiple planes. So I finished my fire prep. I've got, you know, a bunch of those feather sticks, some, uh, you know, matchstick sized, uh, finger sized, thumb sized, and then wrist size over there. And then all of my mistakes I've piled up there. Now he shows how to, he describes in the book that you, you want to have a log and then prop uh, your feather sticks across them. And I'll do that real quick. I've done all of my prep work. Um, he says to, I'm going to put two more shavings on there for good luck. He says that when you do this, you want to uh, put uh, ten, six to ten uh, finger sized and then six to ten thumb sized and then some wrist size and then the, the others. And uh, let's, let's give this a shot here. I make no promises. Once those catch, I'm looking to put some of these on. This is that next size. Just kind of lay them on there. 
I'm not going to use all of them in case I fail here and have to redo it. Needs a little air, I think. No, it's going. Now a little bit more. Just kind of spread them out. Let those go for just a sec. Now I'm going to start with some finger sized stuff. There. That would be a fire. It'll go. Now some uh, thumb sized stuff. A little bigger. smother it, but you also want to feed it. There, there we go. And now uh, a little bit more. Some bigger stuff here. As that stuff catches. Now I'm going to put uh, almost wrist sized stuff on. And that should do it. Um, put some wrist sizes on here to get these started. Now I'm going to go try to figure out a way to boil some water over this. <laughs> One nice thing about having all this snow around is there's plenty of water to make coffee. Now there's a lot more elegant ways of doing this that Morris touches on in his book, but for the time being I've just made a little space in the middle of the fire there and uh, I've got my snow hopefully melting. We'll see. Yeah, it's melting. It'd be hot, hot lid. Now you can see when you're melting snow to try to make water, that thing was packed and we're just getting a little bit. So it takes a lot of snow to make just a little bit of water. Maybe a big pot is what you need. It's, uh, I've got uh, enough water in there to make a good cup of coffee. And now all it has to do is come to a boil and we'll be good to go. Okay, so my coffee is done. It boiled for a few minutes and I've let the ground settle. I'm gonna have a nice little cup here if I can pour this successfully. There we go. You can see the grounds stay back nicely. Feather stick fire. Next episode we move on to different ways of using a fire or the adaptation thing that Morris talks about.